Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Sergio Montiel, I'm from the Cisco TAC VPN team and I'm excited to be here with you. The purpose of this video is to ensure the Cisco Secure Client and Connect VPN configuration conforms to security best practices in a modern world where cybersecurity attacks are common. Let's give a little context first about password spray attacks. Password spray attack are a type of brute force attack where an attacker attempts to gain unauthorized access to multiple user accounts by systematically trying a few commonly used passwords across many accounts. Moreover, these attacks, even when unsuccessful in their attempt to gain access, can consume computational resources from secure firewall and prevent valid users from connecting to remote access VPN services. Attackers can overwhelm AAA servers or firewall resources by sending a large amount of authentication requests and creating a denial of service DOS condition. Meanwhile, on the other hand, successful password spray attacks can lead to unauthorized access to sensitive information, data breaches, and potential compromises of network integrity. This is the most interesting topic of this video, the main vulnerability. This issue is linked to the exploitation of a vulnerability identified as CVE 2024-20481. This vulnerability is documented under Cisco book ID shared on the screen. This vulnerability comes from resource exhaustion due to password spray attacks, where attackers send numerous VPN authentication requests to the target device. Successful exploitation can lead to a denial of service or DOS for the remote access VPN service. A key symptom of this exploit is when users encounter intermittently the error message we display on the screen when trying to establish a remote access VPN connection using Cisco Secure Client. To fix this vulnerability, it's necessary to upgrade to the software versions listed on the security advisory. Additionally, it is recommended that you enable three detection features for remote access VPN. This after your secure firewall is upgraded to these versions to protect it against the OS attacks aimed at a remote access VPN services. This will be shown in the mitigation explanation. Please refer to the security advisory for full details. Now we're gonna identify attacks using login and syslog IDs. To start mitigating these types of brute force attacks, we first need to identify them. This represents the predominant method of compromising remote access VPNs, exploring weak password to gain unauthorized entry. It is crucial to know how to recognize signs of an attack by leveraging the use of login and evaluating syslogs. Common syslog IDs that can indicate an attack if encountered with abnormal volume. As you can see, there's three types of logs that we can identify. Also, you can view it this way through your FMC device. In addition, the username is always hidden until the no login hide username command is configured on the FTD through flexconfig. This one will allow us to see the name of the account that Tucker is attempted to use to connect the VPN. To verify, log into the ASA or FTD command line interface, CLI, run the AAA command and investigate for an initial number of attempted and rejected authentication requests to any of the configured AAA servers. First, in the FMC, navigate to the Devices section and select Platform Settings. Choose the policy assigned to your device. For example, we'll use the platform settings policy for FTD1. Then, click on the syslog option in the left-hand menu. To enable login in the FMC, go to the VPN login settings section and activate it in the firewall management center. Set the login level to informational to ensure proper log reception. To build logs in the FTD CLI, it's advisable to store log information in the buffer to prevent console congestion. Increase the memory size here using 1 billion as an example. But you can adjust this to your preference. Next, create an event list to specify the event classes necessary for the logs you wish to monitor. For this case, include out and web VPN with informational as the severity level. Assign this list to your internal buffer in the login destination then. Select the event class from the one you just created. If desired, you can send logs to a pre-configured syslog server, just in the case that you have it. In this example, we will send them to the buffer to see it better in CLI. Save and deploy the changes. Before verifying the logs, let's adjust the flex config related to no logging hat username. Go to devices and select flex config. Then choose the policy assigned to your device. Add a new flex config object, give it a name, and enter no login hide username. Note the absence of the G letter at the end, as some Firepower platforms require it this way. Also, set the deployment as every time. 
Don't forget that. Move it to the right side, save it, and deploy. Now everything is configured. Let's validate the setup in the CLI. First, connect to your FTD CLI through an SSH session. Once connected, access the system support diagnostic CLI mode. And use the show run log command to review the configuration, which reflects what we set up through FMC. Here's the interesting part. Running the show logging command will display all the logs, allowing you to see logs related to spray attacks. This indicates the device is rejecting these attempts and storing them in the buffer. Additionally, you can execute the show AAA server command to view the number of attempts on your AAA or local server and how many are being rejected. Last but not least, in the FMC, go to Devices and select Troubleshooting. Here, you'll find all stored logs, including messages about AAA authentication rejection attempts, similar to the console, just as you can see on the screen. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the second part, we will look at mitigation actions. Thank you for watching.